Damon Fordham, author and historian as well as lecturer, and I'm here to tell you about a little known story in American history, and that is of the first black astronaut. Now, there's been a lot of talk in recent times and documentaries on uh, ETV and such about ETV and PBS about early black astronauts, or early astronauts, excuse me, but you don't hear a whole lot about these African American and African descent pioneers in outer space. So, I'm going to tell you that story today. The first black person who was actually selected to be an astronaut was a fellow by the name of Ed Dwight, a native of Kansas City. Back in 1961, Whitney Young of the National Urban League recommended to President John F. Kennedy that Ed Dwight be selected to be a, tra a trainee for the astronaut program. Unfortunately, he, unfortunately, after the assassination of President Kennedy in 1963, he experienced so much racism from the other astronauts and department heads and the like that he quit the program in 1966, as well as resigning from the Air Force. However, that turned out to be a blessing in disguise because he became a great sculptor after that, and among the many, sculpt the many uh, statues he sculpted was that of the African American Memorial at the State House in Columbia, South Carolina. So the, state, so the Space Department's loss was the rest of the world's gain in that particular case. However, the first actual black astronaut was a man by the name of Major Robert Lawrence, who was born in Chicago on October the 2nd, 1935. And he grew up being raised uh, by his mother, Gwendolyn Duncan. And he was a very bright young man. As a matter of fact, he graduated from, uh, with a bachelor's degree in chemistry from Bradley University in 1956. In the same year, he was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. Eight years later, in 1964, he graduated from Ohio State University with his Ph.D. in physical chemistry. So, none of all of that, none of this came easy for him, as a matter of fact. In the July the 1st, 1967 edition of the New York Times, he explained that he had to work his way through school as a busboy, a waiter, and various other things. So by 1967, Lawrence had served as an Air Force flight instructor in Germany and a service research science in New Mexico. So in, that, in June of that year, he was one of four men selected for the Defense Department's Man Orbiting Laboratory Program. This was the foundation of what would later be known as the Space Shuttle Program. So it was to see if men could work together in space aboard such a craft for 30 days. In an interview that I mentioned earlier that he did with the New York Times on July 1, 1967, he displayed a great display of humility. He said that this was just one of the, just another one of the things that we have to look forward to in the progression of civil rights in this country, and the result of a lot of people, a lot of effort that people put into preparing me for this, and I feel it's an expression of success that they should enjoy rather than I. And he went on to credit his teachers who, quote, who put him on the right track, so to speak, but my mother was probably the most responsible. Very humble guy. Guy who seemed to really have his head on straight. However, on December the 8th, 1967, Major Lawrence and another pilot by the name of uh, Major Harvey Royer, they were, uh, on a they were on a training flight at Edwards Air Force Base in California. And unfortunately, the plane crashed. Royer survived, but Lawrence did not. So he never actually went into space, and he left behind a wife named Barbara and an eight-year-old son named Tracy. But for many years, there was a controversy over his status as an actual astronaut, since he never really went into space. But however, the September the 18th, 1997 edition of the New York Amsterdam News reported that Major Lawrence was officially ruled by the Air Force as being an astronaut deserving of full honors. So on December the 8th, 1997, the 30th anniversary of the crash, his name was included on the Astronauts Memorial States Mirror at the Kennedy Space Center. Well, since the passing of Major Lawrence, there have been, uh, there have been a number of black people who actually did go into space. The first black person who actually went to space was that was a Cuban, as a matter of fact. His name was Arnaldo Tomayo Mendez. And on September the 18th, 1980, 
he went aboard the so Russian ship Soyuz 38 uh, no, to spend about a week in orbit. He was also the first person of Latin ancestry as well as the first person from the Caribbean to, uh, sir, to go into outer space and he is honored in his native country of Cu as Cuba as such. The first black American to go into outer space was Colonel Guion Bluford who went in space on August the 30th, 1983. He was a native of Philadelphia. And of course there's been a number since then. You've had the first uh, black female astronaut, Mae Jamison, and there's been a couple of others since then. You've had also uh, Charles Bolden from Columbia, South Carolina. And perhaps the best known, aside from Mae Jamison, was uh, Ron McNair of Lake City, South Carolina, who was killed aboard the ship The Challenger in, in January of 1986. So basically this goes to show that there are a lot of things that are really important that the history books have missed. So you can check the sources that I've described in this to look up these people. But it also shows how far the mind can go once it is applied. And I hope that that's one thing that young people will get from this story. And with that said, this is Damon Fordham talking about the first black astronaut.